Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. Um, welcome to our um, Bible study series. Um, we're going to be looking at the book of Ruth today. The book of Ruth in the Old Testament. So please open your Bibles right, and uh, go to the book of Ruth, um, chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. It's going to be our reading today. So Ruth, chapter 3 verses 7 to 13. All right, I'll let you find that a little bit, a little bit longer. That's okay. So um, here we go. Um, Ruth chapter 3, verse 7 to 13. And we read. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he lay down <clears throat> at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly uncovered his feet and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. <clears throat> the Lord bless you, my daughter, Boaz exclaimed. You are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before, for you have not gone after younger men, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary, for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. But while it is true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight, and in the morning I will talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you, very well, let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then as surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now I will lie down here until morning. God bless the reading of his word. That was Ruth chapter 3, 7 to 13. God is faithful. God is faithful. So the background here is that we're in the book of Ruth, um, part of the historical books of the Old Testament. And the author is possibly um, Samuel, but we don't know for sure. And also we don't know for sure the date of composition. Um, it's possible, likely, that it was written during the uh, period of the monarchy. Right, so so um, the kings of Israel. So, um, what is neat here is, um, as we uh, think about the Book of Ruth, is that at first glance, it appears to be a simple love story. Right, um, since Ruth is here, as we read uh, in this passage, in the in the passage we just had, uh, she Ruth petitions marriage to Boaz, and. Um, so um, that's the way they went about it, right? Uh, culturally, uh, in the time, in, uh, in their time and times. However, what is really uh, astonishing here is that the um, ancestry and ascension of King David is the focus here. So the ancestry and ascension of King David is the focus here, and why? Uh, and there's a movement here from the. Um, from the uh, Davidic uh, kingship to our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll get to that in a moment. So it's really, really astonishing. Uh, so it's not just, uh, Ruth is not just some love story, but there's a lot more going on here, and it has to do with the coming uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the topic here is um, God's faithfulness, uh, God's faithfulness to people loyal to him. In this case, there's, a, there's the main characters. We just uh, read about Ruth and Boaz, uh, but there's also Naomi. So um, I encourage you to read the entire uh, book of Ruth. It is very encouraging, and there's a lot you can um, learn about um, people who are faithful to God and um, also um, realize that God is just as faithful today uh, then as he is is now right so it's about the faithfulness of god we're going to be talking about today 
So going back to the verses, in verse 7, we see the uncovered feet. And what does that mean? So, right, Boaz is like after a hard work day, he's there resting, sleeping, you know, he may have had something to drink. We are told he did, so we don't know how much. But so Ruth is gently trying to get Boaz's attention uh, in the midst of the threshing floor, and it's uh, you know, most likely very dark. So... In verse 9, we read, um, spreading the cover and my family redeemer. So what's happening here in Israelite culture is um, um, because um, uh, both Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, are widows, there was a common custom to propose marriage by a widow. So like um, Boaz, um, God also uh, expresses himself. He spreads his wings um, you know, over us, it's, it's an expression of God's character, who God is, right? His essence and um, his, uh, you know, his redemptive nature as well. So um, in verse 10, Boaz is then talking to Ruth. And that is an amazing expression of faith and loyalty to God. Um, God operates behind the scenes here in this entire uh, book, in the entire book of Ruth, right? But don't let that, you know, bother you. That's okay. So um, God is faithful and he's just operating behind the scenes. So um, we're reminded as we read in Deuteronomy, going back a little bit in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. We read Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. God bless the universe word. So when it says a thousand generations, right, he's a faithful God for all who fear him and honor him and obey him and his commands um, basically uh, from now until all eternity. So God honors uh, the... um, the, the faithfulness, the faith people express towards him. So when all of this is taken together, right, what we just read, just a little, uh, you know, snippet, like a passage for you to, to consider, a lot going on there. Um, following the events here, what does God's faithfulness mean to you? What does God's faithfulness mean to you? So it means that we can trust God fully. We can trust God fully. Why? Because God shows loyalty to fellow God-fearing people, right? We think about Proverbs 27, 17. It reads, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And that's what's going on here. Um, God is faithful to us when we obey him. And we see this in the life of Ruth, um, Naomi, and Boaz. So um, uh, as you consider, read the book of Ruth. Um, There's a lot more going on here. And we're going to briefly turn to that. I remember I told you about um, the coming, um, the promise of the Davidic line, King David. And uh, there, um, following that, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in chapter 4, Ruth chapter 4, 13 to 15, we, re- we read about the descendants of Boaz. So uh, Ruth and Boaz get married. and So let's just read what the Bible tells us here. Uh, Ruth chapter 4, 13 to 15. So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. Then the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age, for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. So God bless you this word. We see God's sovereignty here. He's behind the scenes, as we said. 
and God knows past, present, and future. So in, uh, moving on in verse 16 to 22, Ruth 4, uh, verses 16 to 22. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast, and she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor women, women said, Now at last Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is the geneal genealogical record of the ancestor Paris. Paris was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. This is a big one, God bless you, the Lord, um, a big one. So here the line of David begins. It's, it's absolutely astonishing. We have a non-Israelite, a Moabite, that is Ruth, who becomes part of the story of um, uh, Messianic redemption. In other words, the um, uh, preceding uh, Jesus coming as Christ, as our Messiah. Absolutely astonishing. And we can find this in the New Testament. Um, if you turn to Luke chapter 3, Luke chapter 3 in your Bible, in the Gospels, um, verses 31 to 32. Luke chapter 3, verses 31 to 32. We read, Eliakim was the son of Melia. Melia was the son of Mena. Mena was the son of Mathatha. Mathatha was the son of Nathan. Nathan was the son of David. David was the son of Jesse. Jesse was the son of Obed. Obed was the son of Boaz. Boaz was the son of Salmon. Salmon was the son of Nashon. And here in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5 to 6, Matthew 1, 5 to 6, Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. God bless you, his word. So one last big one here now. Um, as we see the... Um, the promise here in the genealogies, uh, what we just read were the um, uh, Jesus' ancestry, right? In Luke 3 and in Matthew 1. Um, it's amazing how um, God in his sovereignty uh, works um, uh, in his faith. Uh, like God is faithful, right? Even when, when we are not faithful. So what does this mean for you? Something to consider in your own personal struggle with faith. And we all do, you and me and everybody, every follower of Christ uh, struggles with faith um, at times more and more or less. We may not want to admit it, but we do. And so we learn here that, um, that we can trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. Why? Because as Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 2.13, 2 Timothy Timothy 2, verse 13. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So he is the Lord Jesus. God bless you in his word. I'll read again. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So what does, what does that mean? That means that Jesus is our faithful protector, our Messiah, and our Redeemer. And he's also the author and perfecter of our faith. Um, Jesus does it all, right? He, our own, he calls us and um, calls us to faith and repentance in him. And um, we read this wonderfully summarized um, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 uh, to 27. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, 25 to 27. For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her, to make her holy and clean, 
washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. God bless you in his word. So what a wonderful, um, what a wonderful journey we have here, uh, seeing how God is faithful and uh, fulfills his promises, even behind the scenes, as we learn here. I hope you enjoyed the book of Ruth. And uh, well, praise be the Lord. God bless you and keep you. Amen.